If you want to sprint as fast as possible, then you need to apply large amounts of force, orient those forces properly, and apply those forces in short amounts of time. Now, in discussions around vertical force versus horizontal force production, I think a lot of people miss some important points. So today we're going to talk about these forces, how they're important for sprinting, and if you need to follow up and learn more, you can check out the article that's linked below where I go into more depth, list studies you can you know look at and all that. So when we think about vertical and horizontal force, I think one of the reasons why most people will say that vertical force production is, you know, the holy grail or it's the most important thing for sprinting is because there's some research that shows that the athletes who run the fastest are applying the most force to the ground, generally speaking. It's not that they're swinging their legs much faster than anybody else, but they're applying more force to the ground. So this was a study by Peter Wayand. It was done years ago. But it pointed to the importance of applying large amounts of vertical force during maximal velocity if you want to run fast. Another thing that people will look at with vertical force production is, say you were to look at a graph of force production during acceleration. You would see that vertical force production is in fact higher than horizontal force production pretty much the, the whole way throughout the sprint except for maybe the block start itself. People will look at the magnitude of force and say, oh, vertical force is higher than horizontal force. Bigger is better, so vertical force must be more important than horizontal force. But this is a really faulty assumption. If you think about, you know, you were running in place or doing an A skip in place or something like that and you were to do that on a force plate, what would you see? You would see a lot of vertical force and no horizontal force production. What else would you see? Zero horizontal movement of the body. So clearly, the magnitude of force at any given point in the sprint is not what makes that force important or not. How you determine whether something is important or not is to look at what is the difference between faster and slower sprinters. And when we do that, what we actually see is that the main difference between faster and slower sprinters is that faster sprinters will apply force in a better manner, meaning they will apply a larger proportion of the total force that they produce each step throughout acceleration. More of that force will be applied horizontally than slower sprinters. Slower sprinters may even produce more total force than a faster athlete, but they're not able to orient those forces in the right direction. If we look at what are the determinants of acceleration performance and 100 meter dash performance, the research shows it is not vertical force production. The determinant of, or at least you know, the, the most important force related characteristics that allow people to accelerate fast and run fast 100 meter times are for example, the ratio of force. So the ratio of force is the proportion of the total force that you produce, how much of that force is hor oriented horizontally. The ratio of force is higher in elite sprinters than sub-elite sprinters, which means that, like I just said, elite sprinters are able to apply force horizontally in a better way than slower sprinters. So if we really want to run fast, then we need to be able to apply force horizontally throughout acceleration. Now, does that mean that vertical force production is completely unimportant to acceleration? Well, no, of course not. We always have to support our body weight, and this is one reason why vertical force production is higher throughout the sprint, because gravity is always pulling us down to the ground, and it's the strongest force that we have to overcome in sprinting. So, in acceleration, vertical force plays a supportive role, literally and sort of figuratively speaking. It you have to apply vertical force to support your body, otherwise you're just gonna crash into the ground and, and not run any faster. But the vertical force production is not what makes us run fast, it just allows us to then apply horizontal force and the application of horizontal force in the right time frame is what makes us accelerate and is what makes us run faster. As long as you can produce a net positive horizontal force, meaning that the horizontal propulsive forces you apply into the ground are greater than the horizontal braking forces you're experiencing each step, you will continue to accelerate. As you get to faster speeds, this becomes harder and harder to do because you don't have as much time on the ground, the ground is moving faster under you, and it's hard to apply large forces at high velocities in a horizontal direction. So fast sprinters are better able at doing that, or they're, you know, they're better at doing that, so they are able to continue to accelerate deeper into the sprint because they can apply horizontal forces at high velocities. Now, are those forces high? No. Uh, you know, at top speed, an elite sprinter, or just before top speed, I should say, um, an elite sprinter might be producing 240 newtons of force. 
that's only 50 pounds of force production or something like that. So it's not a high amount of force, but the difference between the slower and the faster sprinters is that ability. Now, one more thing on the concept of, you know, magnitudes of force. One of the reasons why people will say that horizontal force production is unimportant is because the net horizontal force production at top speed is zero. But that's just by definition, because at top speed, you're no longer accelerating. And because of that, or rather the reason you're not accelerating anymore is because horizontal braking forces and horizontal propulsive forces equal each other. So you're no longer accelerating because your propulsive forces in a horizontal direction are not higher than your braking forces. But once again, that doesn't mean that horizontal force production is unimportant to reaching a high top speed because what got us to the high top speed in, in the first place, it was horizontal force production and enough vertical force production to support your body weight. So you can't look at one point in the sprint, look at the magnitudes of force at that point in the sprint, and then make, you know, draw conclusions that say, oh, well, because of this, then horizontal force production is unimportant. It's simply not true. It's a, a, a poor way of looking at things. So if you want to sprint faster, what do we have to do? From a, a technical standpoint, we have to learn to apply force horizontally while still applying enough vertical force to support our body weight, send us into the air and get to the next stride. If you apply too much vertical force early in the sprint, you're going to just float up through the air. You're going to accelerate your body vertically too much. You're not going to cover as much ground horizontally. You'll probably have excessively high flight times and you won't accelerate very fast. So we do not need maximal vertical force production during acceleration. We just need a sufficient amount of vertical force production to support our body and get us into the next stride. What we need during acceleration is maximal horizontal force production. And then as we start to rise toward the end of acceleration, we need to still apply horizontal force production to the ground as long as we can. Once we reach maximal velocity, then the emphasis needs to shift toward applying very brief vertical ground contact, you know, strikes into the ground, minimize braking forces, and do our best to not slow down. How do we train that in the gym with sleds, things like that? Well, we can strengthen our hamstrings, we can improve rate of force production or rate of force development in the hamstrings and glutes, in the calves, all the muscles that help us propel ourselves forward down the track, those are things that we can do. So we have to combine the skill development side of things, improving your ability to apply horizontal force into the ground, improve your capability to do that by strengthening yourself in the gym, do exercises like bounding, sled pulls, and you know, other exercises that emphasize horizontal force production with some vertical force production component. And then if we wanna be, able, be better able at maintaining our top speed and minimizing deceleration, that's where getting really strong in certain positions is important. That's where having a really high vertical force production capability comes into play. So we need to develop both of these qualities, the ability to apply horizontal force, the strength to do it, uh, the ability to do it at high speeds, and then we also need to be able to, you know, apply those very high vertical force ground force applications later in the sprint. And we have to be able to do both of these things if we want to run fast, reach a high top speed, and maintain our speed without decelerating.